How many days has it been since the A-League was last in action? Um, around the 10th. So, yeah, it was, um, what, the 13th was the last. So, it's going to have been about uh, four weeks since we've last had an A-League game uh, by tomorrow. Roughly, a bit less than four weeks. But it's been a good long time since we've had some proper club action in place and i'm excited for this weekend although i'm uh i'm getting ill it's not covid yet but um but it is it is definitely rough and i'm constantly testing i'll be pissed if um if i can't go to games this weekend or even if i have to go in like a diminished capacity as uh justin says a league show yeah justin yeah the fucking a league show with many w's um that's what we're doing today and jason says how are you feeling after that loss to argentina well um i've i've got the socceroos thing here because um i did want to talk about the socceroos as well and i i wasn't too bummed about the loss to argentina like i'm obviously i i don't Australia doesn't matter to my heart. Like, it's it's very fun supporting the national team, and I enjoy it as a novelty, but the losses aren't going to affect me beyond the game. Like, that's just my opinion. But if I was to think about it a little bit more critically, then, yeah, it's a fucking bummer because we... We turned up that World Cup. We, I mean, for me, we looked good for half an hour against France and got unlucky. Like, we, I mean, what what more can you want from a fucking game? Like, people shitting on Matt Ryan. He made one fucking mistake the whole tournament. Or did he make one against France? I don't know. But he made one mistake. And then you had Messi shooting from the position that he's literally the best at scoring from and uh, getting a goal. Like, two goals that... You know, one of them's preventable, but shit happens in football. And the other one is almost always going to happen when you play against one of the best players to ever play their game. Um, and then, you know, at the end, we went at Argentina. Very proud. Yeah, proud is definitely the uh, the word that I'd be throwing around for this team as well. Um, what they did was, um, was absolutely incredible, I think. And... Um, Obviously, I think one of the special things actually is that it captured the hearts of uh, of other people around the world as much as it did Australia. Like, it really showed um, Australia on a world stage, which I think is cool. Like, I, I don't worry too much about how other countries respect our fan culture and shit. Like, that's become a very, like... Um, very big catch cry lately amongst A-League fans is like, see, we're approved by people overseas. Like, that doesn't really mean anything. But at the same time, it's it's very cool to see, you know, just every fucking content creator out there either praising Australia or getting shredded for shit-talking Australia pre-World Cup. So, um, yeah, it's it's good to see I feel like Saturday's game will have 20 people. Will be great to see. Um, yeah, but can we, like... Can we have a real fucking talk about this influx of football fans? Because, like, we saw it on Saturday with people throwing flares and shit. Like, can we just admit that there are also an influx of people, like, specifically using football to be dickheads? Like, that's, that's part of the thing. Like, can we not... Start being like, oh, everyone shut up. Don't call out dickhead behavior because the news will latch onto it. Like, no. Don't... Can we not bend football over so that rugby league fans might have a go with us for a bit? Like... I, um... Because that's, that's one of the things I wanted to talk about. As you can tell by the title, is like growing the league and... 
yeah, it's good that there's more eyes on Australian football by, I don't know, that's more pressure too, right? And I, I don't know. I don't like this whole like marketing mindset of everyone. It's like, aren't you a supporter first? Asian Cup groups leaked on Wikipedia. Oh, exclusive AFC Asian Cup 2023. Um, it could just be a fucking hoax. That also happens. Um, so what have we got? Oh, no, they're not on there anymore. It, it, it's probably fake news if it was on there and then it got taken down. Um, that would have been cool to see. I, I am interested in that. I wonder if we're going to have the same... Um, the same turnouts around the country for the Asian Cup. Now that everyone is a Socceroos supporter. Everyone is a Socceroos supporter. Everyone, everyone loves football now. La, 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 la. Flash, flash, flash. Football's the biggest game. Suck shit, AFL. Um, yeah. I, I wonder if we're going to see people there in six months. Um, or whenever it is. Is it getting pushed back because, um... Because I can't even find anything about um, the AFC Cup. Uh, so China obviously won the bid. China relinquished hosting rights. Um, and then Australia, Indonesia, Qatar, and South Korea um, entered the draw. Australia dropped out. Indonesia dropped out. And then Qatar won the right to host the tournament. Um, don't know what's happening now. Um, saw it two hours ago and Russia was in it. Um, that might be bullshit. I wouldn't mind Russia joining the AFC, though. I think that'd be exciting. Um, I, I, I mean, they're only joining because it'd be quite hypocritical of uh, of the AFC to kick Russia out. It's like, no, you're involved in a war. You, you cannot play with us. Like, it's, it's fucking genocides and all that crazy shit go on. Um, there's a plan to have the B League in 2024. Thoughts? Well, there was also a plan to have a B League in 2023. Um, so I don't know what's happening with it, but it definitely needs to happen soon. Um, the women's world cup coming up this, I mean, look, regardless of, um, my, my thoughts on the world cup fucking support that Australia got and how that's going to translate to the A league <laughs> poorly. Um, there's definitely an interest in football right now and doing something as bold as creating, a second division and really like a second division also legitimizes football in Australia, even in the minds of Tim Potts, because right now, like you look at Australia and it's just a soccer version of the fucking NRL. That's what the A league is. But once you have promotion and relegation, once you have a fucking proper footballing setup from top to bottom, um, that's, I mean, it's legitimacy. It's undeniable legitimacy for football in Australia. So, it's it's definitely a must to have a um a B league and uh, yeah hopefully it happens in 2024. I um I have no idea. I remember um do I still have the PDF of the is that it or is that something important? Um oh shit, that's lots of personal information on that PDF. I guess I guess I don't have it, but um yeah, there's been a lot said about the second division, but in the build-up, like, because they used to do so much about it. Like, back around, like, 2019, 2020 times, um, there was a lot of talk about what the first division could be, a lot of inquiries and bullshit like that. Um, and I read, like, all of it habitually. And I haven't kept as um, up-to-date with second division news lately, but I I'd be interested to see how it's going. And I definitely want to... Uh, redo for i think a third or fourth time my ideal second division setup because we're getting close to it and i i want to have my fucking voice in the ring because i'm right you're wrong fuck off on flare use we need people to know not to throw flares and to teach responsible use i was at fled fed square i think a flare expo exploded next to me yeah i mean that's the thing is i mean you you assumed, like, it wasn't, yeah, A-League fan. Because they look better when you wave them around, too. Like, it was just real fucking, oh, my God, we're outside. This is big. Let's be dickheads. Which I I think I is one of the worst things in football. Like, the whataboutism. Like, it's... Because 
Everyone walking in there probably knows throwing a fucking flare is bad, but it lands at their feet, and, you know, nine times out of ten, they would fucking pick it up and throw it again. Um, at least at the Sydney one. Like, just dickhead, dickheadery and, like, constant one-upsmanship. What about Um, that, like, that needs to be kept in check as well. Like, it's wonderful that so many people have shown interest in football, and it's right to, right to be positive about it. But, you know, you, you need to maintain what's important to you about football. Like, you've, you've been here. It's it's not about, like, because it seems like a lot of people want to integrate fucking rugby league fans and AFL fans into the A-League, whatever the cost. Like, they almost don't want an A-League. They just want something that's popular and technically football. Like, no, stop doing that. Like, dickheads. It, I, I get that it looks good, but... You should have a special mention that throwing flares is for fucking dickheads. Um, my flag was burnt. Honestly, Justin, I don't know why you're so bummed about that. Like, you gotta... I mean, it's not like a national flag. It's not disrespectful. It's literally a Socceroos flag. Having a burn, that's like... It's a fucking story. It makes the store-bought flag a million times more interesting to have a little burn mark through it. You can be like, look, this is when the rugby league fans turned up. We had a five minute period where dickheads kept throwing flares at the screen. One flare in the Sydney um, fan area went off in front of the TV and someone was holding it up. And I was so pissed that people were like, put it down, put it down. Like it's fucking support. I'm fine missing a bit of the game. Like that's something that happened at the Sydney Derby and happened at the Australia game was like, oh, I want to watch, which again, I don't want in football. Like, I, I get I feel like I still watch the game more than a good chunk of people in the active support. Um, but, like, I don't want active... Because that's what rugby league is. Rugby league is poorly supported because people want to watch the game. I don't want to stand up. I don't want to clap. I want to watch. Um, yeah, it's... I, I, don't, I don't want that in the fucking A-League. Um... I don't think promotion relegation can work in Australia until you change to the New Zealand model. New Zealand has promotion relegation um, down multiple leagues. Yeah, but um, New Zealand doesn't really have like a professional division, right? Like their, their top division is semi-pro and then Wellington play in the A-League. I mean, what, what even is the New Zealand model? Yeah, like, you don't have a professional league. Like, I'm, I'm not trying to be rude, but shut up or, or, or don't shut up. Tell me the New Zealand model because I, uh, I don't know it. But, um, yeah, that's... I actually had some thoughts on this, um, <laughs> this growing the league bit because, um, I mean, what the best part of the World Cup. Like, the fan turnout was good. Um, but I think the best part of this World Cup is the A-League players turning up. I mean, holy fuck, Riley McGree going along the trajectory that everyone expected him to go on is fucking mad. Like, how old is Riley McGree now? Because he is constantly getting better. Like, I don't watch much of him at Birmingham, is it? No, it's fucking Middlesbrough. Um, I don't watch much of him at Middlesbrough, but every time I see him, he just, he keeps on improving. He's becoming such a phenomenal player and, you know, he was properly fucking made in the A-League. Like, there's no two ways about it. He, um, he was loaned out to the A-League in, what, like three, four years in a row, um, or eventually he actually just went straight to Adelaide, right? He was loaned out for a couple years, then he made a permanent move to Adelaide. Then he went to, like, Charlotte in the MLS or something. But, um, yeah, Riley McGree, Leckie, Goodwin, Duke, players that just properly play in the A-League. I feel like that gives a fuckload of credibility to um, to the A-League as well. In, in terms of wor world football as well, because, I mean, that's what you want a domestic league to be, is you want it to be the main um, source of players for your national team. And I think that's what we saw. Does anyone feel like this was, like, not even for a marketing purpose, but just 
for like footballing purposes, this was, you know, an A-League driven national side for the first time. Like I know last um, World Cup, there was like 11 players that had played in the A-League for a club in the starting 11 at one point or the playing 11. But yeah, this time round, it really felt like um, they a lot of the players, if not all of them, have played their best football in the A-League. I mean, no, not all of them, because fucking Jackson Irvine. But, um, yeah, uh, holy shit. I'm starting to snot up already. A lot of the cunts that went to the live science won't go to the league because they think it's like swimming where you would watch them in the Olympics, but not for state comps. It's retarded. Yeah. I mean, also the Socceroos are like the most whitewashed fucking side. Like, the, the Socceroos are for soccer mums. I mean, they're for everyone, and that's... That's a good thing, but everyone includes fucking soccer mums and rugby league fa- Look, I don't know, like, I would happily really, um, but I don't want to because it, it doesn't make me happy, but um, I could sit here and bitch about all the awful cunts that followed the Socceroos this World Cup, but the thing is, is that there's, you know, one in every ten people that rocked up is someone who would be willing to be a dedicated A-League fan, would be happy, would enjoy. Their life would become better by ingraining themselves into the club of their city or their choosing's culture. Um, And I think that's the main takeaway from this World Cup, is people that don't know about the A-League, don't see it as accessible, um, don't see it as safe, but have gone out to these sites, um, are hopefully going to have a better view and understanding of the league and i think yeah it's it's undeniable that these events have definitely done that um but the way that people are fucking flogging this to its grave flogging this like a dead horse i don't know um is fucking incredible considering like you know we're part we're part of the shittest generation of all time probably like in terms of the ability to like put in effort like football is triggering to people in our generation because they're they're pussies um but you know they all turn up to big fucking events like every grand final every home grand final besides melbourne cities has been a sellout um so yeah um we we know the a-league can be big it's size over a consistent period that I I personally want is, yeah, I want people who are coming to every game. I want season ticket holders. I don't give a fuck about three-game membership cunts and people that are going to come to derbies. I want people there on a fucking Wednesday when we're playing in the Champions League because it means a lot because you know you were playing in the best fucking competition. I don't want cunts that fucking... Like, we've already got cunts in the A-League as well that turn up to big games. The hope is that these people turn up to games out of their own fucking thought. Like, why the derby... Like, the Derby's going to get fucking double the attendance we get on Saturday because people are fucking stupid. That's the fact. Like, we're playing a massive team with a big away turnout expected. I have no idea why, as a Sydney fan, you wouldn't be treating this like a grand final. It's it's fucking mad. Um, 18-19 was the best recent season. Um, well, how are you dividing that? Because if you're stopping at 18, 19, then yeah, probably because it's the only one um, not affected by COVID. I mean, what? I mean, back like 16, 17 and 17, 18 were good as Sydney fans. There was 17, 18. There was a little bit of hope for Newcastle uh, having like a Premier's Plate battle. But yeah, I guess 18, 19 had the... um, had the, I mean, like, those semi-finals in 18-19 were fucking incredible. I went back and watched them. I mean, obviously we had 6-1, but also the penalty shootout um, 3-3 between Adelaide and Perth was fucking mad. Um, 2021 was great. Tons of, tons of youth came through and was overall an exciting season. Um, twenty two Yeah, I think... 2021 was good. That was the one that Sydney lost to the grand final, right? 
Um, I think the youth is a myth in the A-League, although I guess it isn't because um, success at the World Cup. But a lot of the players that come through, like, they, they I don't know, they, they get a bit overhyped. But, you know, it, it's definitely, we're seeing some cool youth products come through. So, um, yeah. 2021. Yeah, no, it was, 18, 19 was, you're right. Um, if you're going back to 15, 16, I'll separate it by, actually, I can say with certainty from 16, 17 through to now, the best season as a neutral would have been 18, 19. Um, yeah, that's, um, that's the fact. Uh, anyway, Patrick Kisnorbo left Melbourne City. You don't have to uh, necessarily change your comments to that. Keep the comments coming, whatever they are. I'm happy to respond to them. But it is definitely a talking point that uh, I would like to think about. If you guys have any thoughts, I'd love to hear them because uh, it's a weird thing. Patrick Kisnorbo led City to two Premier's plates and an A-League championship in what, two seasons in charge? Two and a half seasons now. And he's been pulled by CFG to go to their sister club, or Mel Melbourne City's sister club, Troyes, in Ligue 1, uh, France's top division, which is fucking insane. Like, I, because I don't think Kiz Norbo was that good of a manager. I mean, we'll see. I, no disrespect to him, but like, I never looked and went like, oh, Paddy Kisnorbo, he's the future of Australian coaching. Maybe he will be. I mean, he, he has won almost everything that's been put in front of him. Um, so, yeah. But it, it seems a bit weird that that happened. And also, I don't know how City are going to cope with it because uh, they're bringing in Rado Vidasic on a temporary basis, it seems. Um, yeah, no, I think... Looking at the club's official statement, Vitasic was coming in on a temporary basis. Um, his record is he's managed Brisbane for 11 games in 2012, and then he was also an assistant coach at Brisbane, Wellington, Victory, and Sydney FC, as well as more recently coaching the Melbourne City W League side. Um, so, yeah, he doesn't seem like that good of a manager, but, you know, City have systems in place, and... I, I really think if we're going to see massive drop-off from Melbourne City, we're, we're not going to see it until either the finals or next season. Like, I, I think Melbourne City will just go go through at least the Premier's play and the regular season on vibes alone. And if Wanderers or Adelaide or fucking hopefully Sydney, but probably not, can reel them in and give them a bit of a race to the Premier's plate, then maybe they could not win it. But I still have them as a lock for top two this season. And I think that next season is where we could see them struggle with... Um, with lack of quality management so yeah that's that's really my entire summary of kiz norbo leaving um and also because i'm a sydney fan i think it's going to benefit us this weekend um city next season onwards will be mid high table team in my opinion uh yeah i mean you need to make changes mate and we'll have to wait and see um what they do next transfer window or big you know next off season um but yeah, you, you need to make changes when you're at the top because I feel like Sydney, like we've got good players, but what really drove us from the top and made it, you know, problematic is that we, we didn't shift the team around enough. We weren't trying to develop anymore. Like it seems like once we got to November in 17, 18, we just rested on what we did and like it fucking won us, you know, four more trophies or some bullshit. But, um, yeah, like, you need to be making big changes at a club. And maybe the manager leaving is going to be a big change. If they bring in another manager, they've got these fantastic players, a few new signings, and, you know, they renew themselves and kick on even further. Um, but at the same time, if, if they struggle to get a manager in, the signings are crap and indecisive because of it, uh, then it's going to be a problem. And he's th as he says, fuck Melbourne Heart. Fuck you, Melbourne City scum, ole. Ole. Fuck you, Melbourne City scum, ole. 
Ole. I swear we only did that once, and it is still like my favorite just in the moment chant ever because I it, I think it went off just one bay of Amy Parr just in sync at the same time. It was brilliant. Um, I can't describe how happy I am hearing that Adelaide are title contenders. So many years of us just being mid. Yeah, I'm fucking excited for you guys too. Like, I mean, I'm sure I'll regret being excited for you, but um, you just look to have fixed the biggest issue that you've faced since having Marco Kurz in charge of your club, and that's not having free goals up front. And with Ibasuki, you've got a target man, a, you know, clinical finisher. He's got skills beyond just being a big bloke. He's able to bring other players into play. Um, and, you know, Carl Vart doesn't seem like that bad of a manager. Your midfield seems strong. Your defense for me is a little bit weak still, but it's it's doing a job at times. Um, but yeah, really, your attack, your midfield, and now your number nine... Uh, where they need to be. And I reckon, yeah, if Adelaide aren't challenging for the Premier's plate, they'll definitely be a team to watch in finals. Like, I'd be so surprised if Adelaide bottle it from here. Um, I know Van der Sarg, Is Van der Sarg out for a bunch for you guys? Um, I've heard that might be a thing. But otherwise, I mean, use... Adelaide are definitely my tip for top two, actually. Um, I, I have high expectations of Adelaide. Um, was I in Darling Harbour for the game the other week? Yeah, it was medium. <laughs> Were you there? If so, how did you find it? Um, I haven't heard too many opinions other than like flares go boom. Um, I'd be interested to know how like people that actually attend football on a regular basis found the game. Because um, yeah, I, I found it like... It's, like, the scenes were awesome. Like, when we scored that goal, I just became immediately lost. Like, I had no idea what was happening on the screen. I just saw the net ripple and just fucking lost it. And that that was, like, pure footballing joy. So, like, yeah, that was awesome. But as for, like, standing around people yelling, Kick it forward! Put the flare down, I can't see! Like, all game was just fucking, um, a bit much. You were the one that started the Messi's a wanker chant. Yeah, that was the most Aussie thing ever. Like, I people were trying to do um, what's it? Aussie boys are on a bender. Lionel Messi's a sex offender, which was just like, no, that's unpatriotic. Messi is a wanker is possibly the most Aussie fucking chant there is. It's it's iconic in our society. It's been rocked around the cricket, the rugby, the AFL. It only belongs in the soccer too. And to uh, be chanting that about the best player to ever play the game is a real real big step for this country. Um, as a City fan, I just need top two for Asian qualification. Yeah, that's, that's what I want for Sydney at this point. Um, I mean, Asia's... Asia's getting massive. Ronaldo's going there. I know we do this. This, this probably happens every fucking five years. But, you know... We're, we're constantly seeing the profile of Asian football improve. I'm sick of seeing clubs disregard Asian competition. Sydney. Fucking having a CEO. We've, we've got the ability to qualify for the fucking AFC Cup for the first time ever. A winnable Asian tournament. And we've got our fucking CEO saying that that doesn't matter. Come on. Asian football's massive. If you respect local football then you need to call adam santo a cunt um because he is if qual scores it would have been scenes or bh i couldn't even see the bh chance i only saw that it uh it went out for a corner and that's what i love about football is that you know when you're standing there and people are supporting their team vocally and actively you can't see bits of the game but you do get glimpses and sometimes that's cooler Listen and learn, rugby fans. Be like me. Fucking God.
The Asian Cup should be in Australia, to be honest. Well, look, we held one in 2015, right? Um, yeah, we were denied a World Cup, but it, it should, like, international tournaments should be spread around. Therefore, it makes sense that fucking Qatar gets it. Fucking bullshit. Um, but yeah, uh, I also wanted to talk about the upcoming fixtures, so I'm just gonna ramble those in between reading of comments, uh, because I want to put my thoughts out on those. Brisbane play Adelaide, Charlie Austin v Craig Goodwin. I think Austin tweeted something about Australia not making it out of the group. And uh, now he's going to have to be uh, giving, what's it called? A guard of honor to Craig Goodwin, which is a bit much. That's what I, I mean by like, you don't have to tarnish football to like celebrate the Socceroos. Like the Sydney signing session with like Leckie, McLaren, Tilio, and Redmayne is really cringe, but it's it's outside of the footballing aspect of it. Like you'd, you'd feel so deflated as a Brisbane fan, like, you get back to supporting your club, the club that you put money into fucking supporting, and you got to watch your fucking players clap a guy because he scored at the World Cup. It's it's really a bit much, but I don't know. Whatever happens this game, for me, Adelaide will be winning. Um, like, in saying, like, Brisbane have got a decent home record so far this season, but really, like, we were just talking about how good Adelaide are. Uh, they got a strong number nine. It's likely that they'll have Craig Goodwin as a creative outlet. Ben Halloran's decent uh, as well. Their midfield usually does a job and their defense is uh, not terrible. So they're the better side. And I don't know. I feel like it'd be a loss for Adelaide if they drew with Brisbane here. Um, and a massive loss if they lost to them. Um, then... Wait, let's... Is there any other comments? No, not really. All right. Um, Wellington versus Wanderers. First of all, it's an important message. Wanderers fans need to shut the fuck up and stop calling this Wellington away. Um, because I've seen a couple do that, and that's pathetic. Sydney didn't do that when... No, actually, it doesn't matter. It's just fucking words. Um, but no, fuck these. Fuck these cunts for getting, like, this away day. I love... Wollongong away it is especially at Wynn Stadium it is one of the best away days you can do you can get an Indian kebab on the way there you can go to some of the trashiest pubs that I've ever been to uh it's absolutely fucking phenomenal and we aren't getting that this season and West Sydney are so I don't like that but I do think the Western Sydney will drop points why are Wellington playing in Wollongong I don't know um, maybe, like, they they still feel like they've got a market there from their time um, during COVID. Um, and also, it's like, it's a Wanderers game. So, like, you know. But you, you'd figure they'd do it if, like, as a, as a back-to-back. Like, they play Sydney away and then Wanderers at home. Like, I don't... Is this a one-off for them? Let's, um, let's look at Wellington Phoenix fixtures. Like, are they going back to New Zealand or somewhere else after this? Um, yeah, it looks like, yeah, they, they go back to Wellington next week, seven days later, they play in New Zealand. So yeah, no idea why they are playing in Wollongong. I mean, not no idea. Like the guess is cause that's where they were during COVID, but, um, yeah, it's a bit shit, but I don't know. Wanderers have been getting so lucky. Um, so lucky lately. Like, I don't think they're that good. And I think Wellington will get a result against them. Um, but yeah, I, I don't have much more to say on that. Like, Wellington have been poor. Wanderers have been poor, but getting results. There's no real reason other than vibes to say that Wanderers won't be getting the win here. But I'm having vibes. And yeah, I don't think they're going to be getting the win. Um, I saw the fucking scum attack our cove at the end of the derby. Did that happen? I, I don't remember that, but all right. You did the Cove March, that game. Um, That's cool, bro. That's real fucking cool. Um, SA lad. Wanderers proved they're easily breakable with their loss to Mariners. Yeah. Um, and I mean, they drew with Brisbane. They should have lost that game. Like, the goal they got was 
one of the luckiest. The Melbourne victory game. Um, Melbourne victory couldn't finish chances. They could hardly create chances. And Wanderers got a really lucky goal. Like, that, I mean, if they keep doing it, then I'm not saying that's a... Like, I'm not saying that they can't win that way. I'm just saying that they they look breakable. Like, as you said, easily breakable. It's just a matter of teams stepping up to the plate. But, all right, holy fuck. I, um... I, t- I took a ton of shit to... Not, like, illicit, just fucking medicine to uh, get out of bed and do this. I've been, like, bedridden the last two days. So, um, this is getting a bit of an effort. I'm starting to feel quite dizzy and nose drippy and all that gross shit. So, I'm just going to quick fire uh, my last four predictions. Uh, Sydney FC, Melbourne City. I, As I said, Melbourne City, they lost their manager... Um, and I think Sydney will be able to get at them. It's a matter of if we do or if we don't. If Sydney FC turn up and play good football, I think we can beat Melbourne City. But it's always an if as to whether we'll do that. So um, I'm just going to tip a draw because I think uh, Melbourne City will be a bit rusty. Sydney FC won't be at our best and we'll probably just end up getting a draw or maybe a 90th minute goal, hopefully for us. Um... We don't mind if you lie in bed and do it via Insta, for me at least. Yeah, I mean, I just want a modicum of effort uh, in, in my videos. Like, I'd rather not do it than do, like, a complete shit video. Like, th- not not saying that this is great, but I feel like I, I enjoy doing this. I en- it gets my opinions out. If I, you know, whip out some absolute fucking gold, which I've never done in terms of, like, a prediction... It'll be on the internet forever and I can re-upload it and be like, look how smart I am. Um, wonder if the next Derby at Combank, Sydney fans will get the full end and not just the corner because it's unfair if the RBB can just take up the whole other side of Allianz. Um, no, look, it's not unfair. Like, um, I, I think Sydney definitely, if we sell out our allocation, uh, we should get it, but we don't. We don't sell out our fucking allocation. Um... And I think, yeah, it's right to expand the away bay to an extent. That, like, if, if you think those tickets aren't going to be sold, it's it's a club's job almost to uh, to expand the away bay. Not just in terms of, like, a promotional sense for the A-League and making the atmosphere better and camaraderie and all that shit and club's union, um, but also just for safety. Like, you, you shouldn't be putting away fans in general admission um in bulk or anything like that and yeah i I think wanderers would expand it if it was necessary but it never is um what's it wanderers fans are dumb not sure if you heard what they did what did they do tell me um i i have not heard i'm sure there was all sorts of debauchery going on outside the stadium after the derby i'd be very interested to hear um but while you write out that comment i'll talk about perth versus western um i'm interested for this game i'm actually excited to get home from the melbourne city sydney fc game and watch the second half of this one because western have got priovic and diamante back as far as i know unless they've got injured over the international break uh and i want to see them play for western because as much as I detest them and enjoy their lack of success, Diamante and Previch are decent players. And if Weston are another force in the league, then that's going to be interesting. So, um, yeah, I'm interested for Weston. And I'm also interested in seeing Macedonia Park, purple and pumping. Um, but yeah, for me, Weston will be getting the win here. Uh, Perth is a difficult trip. So, you know, have a go, Perth. Maybe they'll be inspired and up for the occasion. But... More likely than not, Western United get the win. Um, They went to a convenience store, chugged bottles of water, forgot to pay, and just left it on the floor for the workers to clean up. They were like 50. Yeah, fucking hell. It's just, yeah, just cunties. Um, Have I met Ellie from Copper 90? Absolute lad. No, I don't meet people. Um, But yeah, he's he's the one that does like the Derby days, right? Um, Yeah. Would be interesting to talk to. Seems like a guy that's been around football a fair bit. Um, And I mean, fuck, I've been watching Copper 90 since like, fuck, I don't know, like 2013, 2012. 
um, like getting up on a decade. And as far as I remember, he's been there the whole time. So, um, yeah, pretty cool. Um, why are you writing cops 90? It's fucking copper, right? You make me confused. Anyway, the F3 derby comes next. Uh, I'm going Newcastle. I, uh... I think Newcastle will get the win. I think Central Coast will be on a high with... How many players do they have coming back from the World Cup? Two? Um, Quoll and Cummings, that's it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I've just got Newcastle on vibes and then Melbourne Victory beating MacArthur because uh, MacArthur are shit and Melbourne Victory have also been shit, but... I think Melbourne victory at a minimum will be making final and I feel like beating MacArthur is one of the minimum hurdles to clear to make finals. So, um, yeah, I think victory will be getting the win. And, uh, yeah, that pretty much wraps up the A-League show. Um, I am shipping up to Boston, still going on about, uh, apparently the RBB being dicks or something. I don't know. Um, cool. Then, Jason, you reckon you can get a result on Sunday? Yeah, I mean, if I was a victory fan, first of all, I'd kill myself. But second, I would be confident about getting a result against MacArthur. Um, because they're shit. You, are you doing the trip? Is, is this like a big OSM trip or is it going to be empty? Because I'm weighing up going to, uh, going to one of the games on Sunday... Um, obviously the F3 derby would be cool, but I think Campbelltown's a bit easier for me to get to. Um, so I could go to that and I'd like to, as long as there weren't any fucking victory fans there, cause they disgust me. Um, but yeah, that's, um, couple of people going up. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's still pretty good. That's, I don't know what more you can expect from some A-League away days is a couple of people, like, it, it, it's better than thousands of people going, Tim Potley, bit behind you at the march, I did the crown meet up and I was near the flares, I was right in front of one on the bridge, but one of our boys threw it over, bro, these are really convoluted autistic stories, um, maybe they, they are better in person, but, um, good on you anyway um i am about to die so i'm gonna call the video here it's been an absolute pleasure having this quick chat with you guys um i'll answer this one last question and then i am heading off because as i said about to drop but has a flare exploded near you no but one landed near my feet on um on sunday morning against Argentina one was um yeah right there and I'm not a pussy right I fucking sing through the flares I hate the fucking if you do that if you're walking through flares fuck you if you cover your mouth or stop singing you are a fucking dog cunt um sing through the fucking flares have your throat ruined like you're deep throating a fucking razor blade um but yeah um get a nap in yeah all right See ya. Been fun.